Welcome and good afternoon to everyone. I hope you're enjoying Discover. And that's why we've embarked on this project we call the machine. So let me introduce you to what the machine is, and then we'll go into a little bit of detail. So the machine actually rethinks computing because we're going to now take specialized processors. We're going to specialize the compute to the actual workload that we're running. And I'll actually connect that to some of the work that we're doing today. But the other thing that we're doing is we're going to connect that to a large single pool of what we call universal memory. And again, we'll give you a little bit more details on that. And then we're basically going to just connect those two with a very high speed, low latency fabric based on photonics where we use light for communications. This will enable us to deal with massive, massive data sets. But not just be able to take those massive data sets, but ingest them, store them, and then manipulate them, and do this at orders of magnitude less energy per bit or per compute. The next part, as I mentioned, is photonics. Using light instead of electrons and copper wires for communications is absolutely key to that scalability. What you saw in the earlier animation was 160 racks, but the key is those 160 racks behaving as one server. Any one byte in that rack of 160 petabytes can be addressed in under 250 nanoseconds. Byte addressable, 160 petabytes in under 250 nanoseconds. So this is a piece of, of fiber. We have line of sight to basically getting to about six terabits per second on a piece of fiber. If you tried to do that on copper cables, you'd have a bundle about this big. That's the kind of magnitude. And the energy reduction is in the thousands. And so what we do now is we rethink how we do this by rethinking memory in a cube-like fashion, photonically connected to your processor. So you see how our design constraints have now completely vaporized. We're no longer limited to two-dimensional thinking when we design, whether it's a phone or a laptop or a tablet or a server or a rack of servers. We can actually rethink how we store data and how we connect to that data and make all of that available. We're going to take all of the best of DRAM from a performance and byte addressability, combine that with flash-like storage, and we're going to make those things one thing and call it universal memory, and that technology is something we call Memristor. In chemistry, you probably learned about something called ions, and if you don't remember, if you forget that part of your chemistry class, an ion is where you have an atom where you've either added or removed electrons from the outer layer. In our case, we're using oxygen atoms, and we remove two electrons, and it becomes an ion. That unbalance in, in, in profile that we've created is what allows us to now store data at the atomic level instead of using electrons. And so we can now do this on a much, much greater scale. We can flip between 0 and 1 at the picosecond range, and we require no energy, just like flash, to maintain the state over time. Again, tremendous increase in density, tremendous reduction in power. So let me simplify all of this and make you think about this in six simple words. The machine is this. Electrons compute, 
photons communicate and ions store, okay? But if you just remember those six words, you will actually understand what the machine brings to the table. Electrons compute, photons communicate, ions store. And so we are, as part of the machine, announcing our intent to build a new operating system, all open source, from the ground up, optimized for non-volatile memory systems. We want to reignite in all of our universities around the world operating system research, which we think has been dormant or stagnant for decades. And by the way, I, I, I'm just not sure if I mentioned it. So this operating system we're creating from the ground up, all open source, so we want everybody to come play with us, right? And so everybody needs to understand that open is at the core of what we do. So this is what we get in our current simulations. We believe we can reach a 6x performance increase by focusing the workload, but doing at 80 times less energy. So you can imagine why we're so excited when we think about the machine and bringing all of the pieces together. We're leading the way again. It's very real. We are putting a significant investment, and HP really is leading the industry once again, and we hope you will join us for the ride.